bit to what Ja say or I knew ya. What Ja teach and shut bar like dry serene. Ja wear a shadow still like two, like green upon Ja grass. And like Ja showers on young plants. When I and I anoint and call aloud the name of Ja, I and I shall respond straight to Ja. Rock the far right, hide it till I see I. I and I, Ja, I reach out. Who's working for I but perfect and who weighs off for I but John. A faithful God who does no wrong. Righteous and true, it's Ja, Rasta the far right. I just love the eye. Trap and shoot of the world. Oh, 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 love these, love these brothers, love the work that they, that they have done, and hope that ones and ones get to check out more of Inubia and other, other positive, and uh, let's say righteous, righteous brothers and sisters out there, um, in the music industry, you know, because we know about the music industry, the golden calf of the present day music, uh, industry. And I am Wendem Yadon, Brother Ras Ayadonis, Ras Yadinos Teferi, men of the Lion of Judah Society. Now, we want to address some of the comments that have come in. Um, there's a lot of very good comments, and I give thanks for, for all of y'all. You know, the good, the so-called even the bad, and even the ugly kind of shows us just how how sick a lot of folks are. But some of the good comments, some of the critical comments, some of the ones that say, hey, you might not be correct with what you're saying here or there, check this out, so forth and so on, are the comments that we want to address right now. There's a recent comment that came in about, let's check over here, that came in about a day ago to the Ethiopian World Net or to the Illnet channel, Ethiopia World Net um, as of, uh, this is March 20, 2012. And um, this is from Bruce um, Grimes, 2509, and it was posted about a day ago. And the individual says this, right, and this is what we want to address right here, though we're in the 22nd, 23rd, um, uh, Vai Yat Hel um, Pekude, um, teaching, sab- sabbatical Sabbath teaching, Rastafari Sabbath studies. But this comment here is, is important because also it's also connected with this present book of um, Exodus that we are, you know, summing up, not ending off, but are completing in this period of um, time, prophetic time as well. But the individual, Bruce Grimes, 2509, says, If only you understood that Egypt never had any slaves and that there is no evidence of any Hebrews ever being there. Research it and find out yourself. The grave robbers never found such evidence. The Bible, old and new, was written for white supremacy. All right? That's the comment right there from Bruce Grimes, 2509, on the Ethiopia World Net channel. All right? Thank you. Give thanks for your comment. We don't agree with everything you say, but we do agree that it's a point that needs to be further, you know, further... um, investigate it. It's, it's a point that we want to address your comment now. Now, the first part of the comment that we want to address, first of all, is actually, we're going to go to the last part of what you said, basically, the, that the Bible, right, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible was what was um, written, as you say right here, the Bible, old and new, was written for white supremacy, Point of correction, the Bible was rewritten, you know what I'm saying, was rewritten in that sense. Speaking about the King James Version of the Bible to, um, to support, it was used, rewritten and King James Version, so forth and so on. King James Bible is a Masonic Bible. Now, the point about Masonry we're also addressing, too. There's a difference between Mason and Freemason, so forth and so on, but we'll get into that a little bit more. But the first point I want to say is that the Bible, Old and New, Old and New Testament, was obviously um, 
rewritten or has been tweaked and, and, and translated in the dubious and questionable way that it's been translated to support, to endorse um, the Gentile world dominion or what we call and know as um, white supremacy as we're in these times, prophetically speaking, the times of the Gentiles. So we can call it the Gentile times, the Gentile world dominion, or a little bit better, a little bit more clearer, we can call it white, quote, supremacy. And, and along with that, we know of the whitewashing of the pictures, so forth and so on. But if that is to imply that the Bible originates with white folks or with white people or with the Gentiles. I'm talking about the, the, the root kind, the root, the, root, the root of it is, is, is springing out of white men's and white people's ideas that has nothing to do with um, the Hebrews who are black peoples and who we are the racial and spiritual descendants of. We will say Wishitam. We will say lie. That's a lie. So we agree that the Bible as we know it or as we have received it was uh, rewritten for the purposes of endorsing and supporting and basically justifying to give a false, a logical fallacy or a logical fallacious justification for the institution of um, Gentile world supremacy or white supremacy or the enslavement and the oppression or downpression of we, the black peoples of the world. But if you were to look at the matters contained in the scripture in context with, for example, we're going to point out a couple of these books right here. And these are folks who have researched the Bible. And so far, we haven't seen any documentation that, that um, um, with evidence that disproves the contention of other black brothers. And let's get, the, let's get this book by this sister here, too, um, the ISIS papers as well. So I'm going to show you a couple of these books, and then we're going to get into the message and the point about, quote, slavery. W were the Hebrews enslaved? We've used that terminology before as well, the Hebrews and slaves in Egypt. We use the terminology of the Hebrew slaves or slave and slavery with, with um, Egypt. And this is a point where we'll, we'll say you're correct that um, they were not slaves or they were not slaves in the sense that we call slaves today. And we have to get to the very root of the word first and foremostly. But this, first of all, this one book right here, this is uh, Dick Gregory's um, Bible Tales. It's a very good book. This would be, with us as free people, this would be like, um, he would be like a rabbi, and this would be like a Talmud or a teaching right here, this particular book, um, Dick Gregory's um, Bible Tales, because it takes the basic stories in the Bibles and really shows a more logical and realistic application of the matter to we black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean, we black people in the West, right here. And and it, the story is so it's so convincing that it's like one of that more preachers and pastors don't utilize such a book. You understand? Look it up. There's probably copies of it. We don't know if it's in reprint. It should be. Somebody should reprint it, but we don't know. If, you know what the status of that, but we was able to get a copy of this, and this is one of the first books that we read right here. So for folks who want to teach their children the Bible from a black perspective, this is a very good book right here to begin with, as well as in like Bible studies, you understand, for, for black people, especially for the children. So that's the first book that we want to point out. Then we have this particular book right here that is that was written by um, Rudolph Windsor, right? Um, Rudolph R. Windsor, um, the designs by L. Um, Hagan, and this right here is from Babylon to Timbuktu. And we've pointed this particular book out as well. This gives historical evidence, you know, to prove that the Hebrews, 
first of all, are black people and that they experience in Egypt that is or has been translated in the King James Bible, um, generally speaking, is accurate. And this is because when we look at the King James Bible, the King James is a, a white man's um, translation of the Bible, but it's not the original um, scriptures. And the original scriptures and documents come from we black peoples. See, this is, this is the, the real crux of the matter, right? And this is also the next book right here, The Valley of the Dry Bones, right? This is the second book um, by um, Rudolph R. Windsor. Very important in this present time. I think this is very important. But this book right here gives you some of the historical context, the evidence. This gives you the evidence of the Hebrews. Who are the Hebrews? Who are the Israelites? Are they black? Is the story of the Bible accurate? This here gives proof that it is. This follows up on the prophetic elements of it, where we're at right now as black folks in the West, the Valley of the Dry Bones. This is the reason why you see all the skull and bones design black folks now. One time we would have said seeing black folks wearing skulls, like, are you into rock and roll? But, um... <laughs> This is a little bit deeper than that, but then blacks say that they created rock and roll. So if that is so, well, Skull and Bones, Valley of the Dry Bones, you know, hopefully you can get it. Um, if you can't think on it, pray on it, um, do a little more research. Now, this is, this is an excellent book. This is uh, Francis, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, The Isis Papers, The Key to the Colors. This can explain more on um, white supremacy. This can explain more on white supremacy. Here's a sister right here. Um, based on the teachings of uh, Dr. N um, Nellie or Neely Fuller, Jr., who was, in a sense, her mentor or her, her teacher in our terminology, like her rabbi, so to speak, you know, her, her, her professor, her teacher, the one who really gave her the overstanding of it. Now, this is also another excellent book as well. Let's deal with slavery for a moment, right? First of all, the whites don't have the only Bible in the world. In fact, they don't even have the oldest. The oldest Bible, you know what I'm saying, or the oldest actual documents, even, even older than the Dead Sea, are the Ethiopian documents. The Ethiopians, yes, the Ethiopian Hebrews have the oldest documents of the Scripture and the oldest continual um, legacy, you understand, know of the scriptures and the oldest interaction with the historical people of the Bible. And this is a perspective that a lot of um, black um, consciousness folks and, and Afrocentric folks, though they allude to it often, they avoid really getting into the, the, the heart of the matter. That means the language, the Afro-Shemitic language. Hebrew is a Afro-Shemitic language. Technically speaking, according to linguistics, Hebrew, Hebrew is Afro-Shemitic, um, as well as Arabic. But before the Hebrew and the Arabic, we have the Gutas, or the Ethiopic. And now we have the, the pure language of the King of Kings and his Christ, or the Royal Amharic and the Metzhaf Kedus. So when folks talk to us about Bible and white supremacy, Yes, we will have to defer to the point and say, yeah, white folks did do a lot, of, a lot of tricky and devious things with the version of the Bible that they have translated, used, and foisted on the whole world. But behind the King James translation, you know, or before the King James translation, we have evidence, actual evidence, of black people carrying on this tradition apart from white folks forcing it on them. Do, do you understand that? See, a lot of folks don't really understand that, that we have an African, a black, Ethiopian, Hebrew tradition, biblical tradition of the Bible, historical evidence that traces right back into the Bible that is from a, an independent line of um, how do they call it in in the independent line of descent, an independent line of uh, um, a, 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 
a, a, another root, should we say, than what we have in the West. But most folks only know what we have in the West. Most folks only know the Western, the Western documentation because they basically only speak English and they have not really developed um, um, linguistical um, ability in other languages such as Ethiopic, especially Ethiopic. For us as black folks, Ethiopic is very, very important. And we're about to um, release and print the Octatech, the Ethiopic Octatech. You know, you heard of the Pentateuch, but now we're gonna release the Octatech. And the Octatech, Octa means eight. So in the Western Jewish tradition, they have what's known as the Pentateuch or the the, the, the five books. In the Ethiopic, in the Afro-Shemitic tradition, we have eight books. You understand? We have eight books, and those eight books are what's known as the Octatech. And this, now we can compare that with King James Bible and with um, the Masoretic. You see, some say the Masoretics, but before the Masoretic um, version of the Hebrew Bible, we have the Ethiopic sources. And we can even prove that the original Masoretic sources were reconstructed from the existing Ethiopic documents or the Gutes documents from that remnant of the Beta Israel, that renewed kingdom of David that was planted in Ethiopia during the time of the one whom, biblical, biblically speaking, is called um, King Solomon and the queen, of, the queen of the South, the queen of Sheba, um, Negist, Makeda, so forth and so on. Now, in the Western white supremacist perversion of um, biblical scholarship and Bible study, so forth and so on, they avoid that evidence. They try to make it seem like it's a legend, Ethiopians, you know, they somehow they were converted to um, Judaism, but they can't point to white folks coming in and forcing them or making, they, 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 can't, they, they can't prove that. So what they try to do is just put it as a legend, you know, and say, well, this is what the Ethiop is amazing, wow. It's so mysterious how it begins, so forth and so on. Because if they were to admit what the evidence actually says, it would basically prove that the whitewashed version is a lie. Now, we wanted to deal with the Bible first and foremost, the point about the Bible first and foremost, that um, uh, Bruce Grimes, you know, was so um, um, generous to actually put that point up there, as well as the part about... Um, Slavery, which is the next part of it, but the see the Bible is first. Why the Bible is first? Because first of all, we have to understand well, what is the King James Bible? What is the origins of the King James Bible? What is the origin of the Scriptures? You know, and if one would like to go into a a, a reasoning, a discussion, or even a debate about those matters, which is a which is a much more of a not even so much an intellectual, but there's a lot of evidence that has to be gone through if we would really trace the descent. The word I was looking for before was descent. If we were to trace the descent of the King James Bible or the Western, the, the, the European versions of the Bible, going back to from King James Bible to the William Tyndall Bible to the, to the Eurocentric Masoretic Jews, version to, um, what's his name, um, 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 Luther, you understand, um, Martin Luther, um, to uh, the Dewey Reigns Bible, to the Vulgate Bible, to the Septuagint Bible, and then eventually we're going to go back to what they call the ancient manuscripts. That's what they say, the ancient manuscripts. What was the ancient manuscripts? They don't say ancient Hebrew manuscripts. Notice that. But they like to say the ancient manuscripts, because the ancient manuscripts were the Afro-Shemitic Ethiopic scrolls and the Ethiopic document and the Ethiopic evidence. And we even have proof that Isra, who was highly credited in modern Judaism to be the one who um, squared, he's the one who, 
who who are uh, squared, you know, like if you look at a square, he squared the round Afro Shemitic um Fidel or or alphabet, creating what we know today as the square, square Hebrew characters. But even the documentation that he referred to were Ethiopic documents, and Ethiopic documents from that same uh, restored, uh, renewed kingdom of David that was established in Ethiopia. So we have a, you know, we have our own root to go into. So let no one make the mistake and think because we're speaking about the Bible and we're using the King James Version, mainly because the majority of, of the people that we minister to and, and reason with, like ourselves initially, were, you know, in this English-speaking world. So we have to deal with what ones know and what ones can refer to and gradually take them to the root and take them to the source of it. So we're, we're starting from, in other words, where we're at. But make no mistake about it that we are limited to just the King James or the so-called European uh, Jewish so-called um, documentation because we have and we know our root and even the Bible kind of speaks to that in um, Zephaniah 3 and 7. And let's go there to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 7 for a moment. And this is, this is very important to really deal with because one of you mentioned the Bible. English-only people can only refer to the English-only Bible. They barely can refer to the so-called Septuagint or the, or the Masoretic documents. And another thing about the Septuagint, people say the Septuagint is Greek. Just like we as lost sheep are speaking English, many of our ancestors in that early beginning of the Gentile world times were speakers of Greek. We have the example of Hawaria Paulos. People say, oh, he was a Roman. And, and that's where the Romans were making up the New Testament. Paul was just like a lot of y'all. Y'all have white names or European names, right? You're speaking so-called English language. Y'all are victims of, of trauma-based mind control and brought out 400 plus years, how to make a slave, so forth and so on. And the very same conditions that we face today, ironically, were the very same conditions that the first century, what we know in the Bible as the first century Christians, first century world, 2,000 roughly years ago, were facing as well. So, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting when they say, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end, so forth and so on, because we find those same connections. So do not think that when you hear um, something was translated in Greek, that this means it was white Greeks, because the very root of the Greek civilization, coming from the Minoans, coming from the Ionians, coming from even the uh, uh, um, uh, Estruscans, Estruscans, so forth and so on, which that's more the Roman part of it, they were black peoples. You see, and this is what a lot of folks and, and, and European scholarship is, um, not ironically, but predictably silent on that, even though the evidence is there. It's the evidence is there. So when you tell a lot of folks that, that there were like seven Roman emperors who were black, most people will dismiss that. <laughs> no, no, no. Africans were in Africa and, and white man's Romans. No, there were seven Roman emperors starting with uh, Severus. That the Greek civilization that we know today, you understand, know was based on the suppression of an earlier literate, literate, high culture civilization that was black peoples. So see, in this trauma-based slavery, white supremacist world, a lot of things that are black, that was high culture, mathematical, advanced, they whitewash it and make you believe that since it was in, quote, Europe, you understand, or above the, the Mediterranean, that it was white folks doing it. I mean, even England, even, and you know, we could go all the way to the Vikings, you understand, and find black blood there. You understand? We could almost go back to the, what many of the older teachers like, um, um, uh, what's his name, Rogers, uh, J.A. Rogers said that wherever, it's been said that wherever water touches land, you will find Ethiopians there to recognize that even um, seamanship and navigation 
traveling the seas or the seven seas of the seven continents, both on earth and in the heavens, but let's deal with earth right now, was based on black people. Black men and black people were, were part of that. But you would not know that because this is one of the curses, you understand, of the Gentile world domination. In order for the Gentiles to dominate the world, they have to remove from you and me, I and I and all of us, any inkling that black peoples or that the peoples that they say are inferior and have subjugated have done anything meaningful, valuable, or anything that they have stolen and were able to utilize to come to the dominion of the world. In fact, when you look at the fact that the Gentile world dominion, which equals white supremacy, is actually the last of the civilizations, you know, saying running this 2,000 or so years, that all the other civilizations that we look at, you know, saying in previous time before the rise of the so-called um, the, the latter-day Greeks and the Romans, it was people of color, it was native root races, it was black peoples, or if we would identify them with a, a, a nationality or an ethnicity, they were Ethiopians. But here in Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3, um, chapter 3, I said verse 7 before, let's go to chapter 3, verse uh, 9, chapter 3 and 9 of Zephaniah. It says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord, which is a, a English, a Gentile title. That's not what was written in the original scriptures, as you probably already know or should know, to serve him with one consent. Now, let's just use this verse right here for, and it's speaking about the Bible, Old and New Testament, the Bible and white supremacy, which is kind of the first part of the point of what uh, Bruce Grimes said right here, 2509, which is a worthy point to, to address. And we're still going to deal with the part about, um, about slavery and, and, and ancient Egypt. Were there slaves in ancient Egypt? Was there slavery in ancient Egypt? Were there Hebrews in ancient Egypt? Stay tuned. But this verse right here, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9, says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the, then it has capital L-O-R-D. Now, that's an example of how white supremacy, we want to give you some examples. We can say white people, you know, where the Bible was written more correctly, it was rewritten to endorse, support, or give justification to the Gentile world domination or what we know as white supremacy. Now, to say that the ideas that all this was dreamed up from the, 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 the truth of what the Bible is pointing to, that's a lie, that's an error, and a lot of Afro-centric um, Afro, um, folks and the black Egyptologists, they have, they have taken that, that logical, fallacious opinion Yovas, and it's adversely affecting the, 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 the movement and the progress Yovas, and of true freedom, of true sovereignty. Why? Because it's a lie. The, the, you know, white people didn't, didn't dream up the ideas. They came across these original ideas, eventually over time translated these things, and then tweaked things. But the key things they tweak, first of all, are the God names. Notice right here, it says to call on the name of the capital L-O-R-D. Now, we're going to get forward into this teaching. Hopefully, we'll be able to put up a, a, a couple of more um, teachings on this. But we need to clear this so we can deal with this and give you some, some evidence of this. Because when we first of all recognize that the Bible, the true Bible, what the Bible is referring to, the true scriptures is an Afro-Semitic or a black man reality that black peoples, you know, turned away from. Like, for example, let me ask you something, right? We know that the ancient Egyptians, right? We know the ancient Egyptians were black folks. Are we agree? Um, Bruce and others also that also share the particular opinion that Bruce Grimes made um, or commented on. We agree that the ancient... Um, the ancient Africans, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient civilized or civilizer peoples were black folks. Well, what happened? What they tell you happened is that um, we taught some white folks how to read and write, 
and we initiate some of them in the mysteries, and then all of a sudden, bow, they just took over. Do you believe that? I mean, that, that is more of a stretch just to believe that we taught people how to read and write. Okay, white folks taught us how to read and write too, right? So where's, where's the big takeover? Even though people know how to read and write, do they know how to comprehend? They know how to read, but do they have reading comprehension? And this is one of the most, it's a small point, but it goes far. I've often spoke on this. Um, I've also made this point that in school, when I went to school, you know, um, um, elementary, you know, those uh, high school and and even before high school, but mainly in high school and even in college, we would have these tests, right? These tests that would basically, you know, the reading comprehension tests. And I'm, I'm, I was amazed how many folks, you know, those reading comprehension tests where you read like a passage, a paragraph or whatever like that, a story, and then at the end of the story, they would ask you to answer certain questions. They will say, um, you know, what happened in the story, so, and they give you one, two, or A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, or maybe they'll give you um, a, a fifth one that will say all of the above or something like that. And it was so amazing when I discussed with my friends and my classmates after, said, oh, how do you like that? You remember the questions? Of, what, what did you answer for such and such? And how many people would read through the whole passage and then they would still get the, the answer wrong. I don't know if you, you're following me on this, is that they would, um, you know, choose more answers of what they wanted the story to be than actually what the evidence in the passage was pointing to. In fact, my, my technique was I would read through it. Sometimes I, it's just when you got to the end of the test, you didn't have much time, but you wanted to at least put an answer for everything so you increase the possibility you get a, a good score. You don't want to leave stuff blank. So when they say, you got like five minutes, ten more minutes, so sometimes there's like maybe a couple of passages, because I'll get, I'll get into the story so much, and sometimes I might be, you know, enjoying the story that I'm not really maximizing the time. So I have to, like, I recognize, okay, only got a little bit of time left and everything, so I knew I had to skim over. So I developed this technique where I would skim over the, the, the passage, and then since the whole thing was about answering these questions, it wasn't about pleasing yourself and enjoying the story, but answering the questions. I would go to the questions, right? And question one, uh, who was so-and-so and so-and? What did he, A, B, C, D, E? And so you read over that, and then you read the, the context of the question. You read the possible answers, and you will look back into the passage to find which one is logical. But most folks would choose the way they wanted it to be, Instead of going to, you know, and there's a couple of other examples, but I think that kind of suffices, suffices right there. So let's talk about the Bible, right? Let's talk about the Bible. Now, the Bible and so-called white supremacy. You know, the word white supremacy should have a, quote, a quotation around it, right? We'll call it, put it around supremacy. You understand? Know white supremacy. In parentheses, we'll call this the Gentile world, right? The Gentile world or the G world. That's why they have the G in Freemasonry, actually. But they'll say it stands for, for God. No, it stands for Gentiles. It actually does. You know, it stands for Gentiles. I mean, yeah, the, the cipher of the G, you know, is, is a cipher of the compass. Yeah, it's a half compass. You can use C, too. You can use in the ancient order. They didn't have a, a half circle. They had a circle. You understand they had a circle for deity, for God. If you notice something, if you look at this right here, you, you have a G, right, a G here, or they might have it like this, right, for the G. But in the ancient times for God or divinity, this was the symbol right here. They call this symbol um, Re, you understand, or some say Ra, you understand, would be Re for God or for the cipher, for completion. And the Jews call it Gemara. The Gemara is the cipher, is the perfection. You know, it's like um, knowledge, um, wisdom, understanding, or comprehension. So this is for complete ciphering, you know, or what we call as Rastafari, we say overstanding. So another way of referring to this 
we can call it overstanding. You know what I'm saying? People say, well, what about understanding? Well, understanding with the U is like this G right here. You understand? It's, it's incomplete. Understanding is incomplete, basically. Speaking about words, sound, and power, and dealing with the words that we're using. So we're talking about the Bible, right? The Bible, you understand, that we know of is called the KJV, right, the major one. Now they got all kind of translations and mistranslation and retranslation. You know why they have all these new translations of the Bible, folks? They have all these new translations because we've begun to figure out the old ones. We've begun to figure out that the King James Version of the Bible basically is Masonic, right? It's a Masonic Bible. People say Freemasonry. Hold up. Hold up on the Freemasonry point, because when we go back to Freemasonry, what's the earliest origins of, quote, Freemasonry? I hope you understand there's a difference between Masonry, which is a basic craft, a basic skill, a basic, we call it occupation, and Freemasonry. In other words, we have operative Masonry. Excuse me, I need this wall built, um, you know, to... to you know, wild animals are coming in. I need a wall built here, a strong wall, a little door here, maybe a window up at the top. Can you put a, can you put a tower over here? I would need a mason. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't need no Freemason. The Freemason going to speculate on how we could put a wall up here in the, you know, in the political dimension to gain this natural resource and steal land and wealth. And uh, that, that's the Freemason thing. So you understand there's a difference between Mason and Freemason. Please overstand that point, because if you don't understand that, everything else about the particular subject matter we're discussing will confuse you. You understand? Will confuse. So the King James Version of the Bible, right, is what? What year? It's 1611, right? Here's what's so very interesting. People will talk about this Freemason thing, right? Yet the evidence, we're talking about evidence, right, bro? Evidence? The evidence basically points to something like 17... I like to say 1776, like your, like your dollar, you know, the Adam Weishaupt, the Adam Weishaupt thing, right? Weishaupt, more correct, since he was a German Jew, you know, the W as a V, but double V. But anyway, 1611, so that's why we call it Masonic. Understand, this is why we call it Masonic and not free Masonic. These new Bibles, you understand, these new Bibles are free Masonic. In other words... The newer versions, let's go right here, the newer Bibles, right, the newer Bibles, right, are what we can call free Masonic. What do we mean by that? We've got some programs and there's a lot of videos out there where, you know, which discusses these, these new Bible versions and so forth and so on and what these new Bible versions are doing. I know we have a couple of of these vids actually on our doc vids. So if ones want to get it there or check it out on the internet. But the newer, like the NIV, you understand, the new international versions, even the, they have a, okay, this is the best example right here, the newer Bibles. For example, we have the, um, the NIV, you know, there's a whole bunch of these different kind of um, um, NS, there's the NS, there's the NS, I think, uh, V. Right, but then they, there's also the N. Notice they use they like using N a lot. N, N. It's the N of all this kind of confusion. The NKJV, which is actually the new. Pay attention to this one. The new King James version of the Bible. So let's show you what the white man did when he was talking about old and and New Testament. What the brother say again? He said, um, he said, um. Uh, the Bible, old and new, was written. No, it was rewritten and retranslated to endorse, to support the institution that we know as white supremacy, the Gentile world dominion, and is the basic foundation of this society, of, of, of this world system, this world system. Believe it or not, the Achilles heel of this world system is the Bible. It's not the political. It's not even the dollar. It's really the Bible. You know what I'm saying? It's the Bible. And, and I'm going to prove this right here, or at least we're going to attempt to begin to prove this, because the point is a little bit deep. So 
you know, not just one particular point sufficiently proves the whole thing, but it begins, hopefully, to open up people in direction to look. He says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. Now, who is speaking? Who is, who is alleged? Let's say like this, like a, like a, like a legal or court-related case. You understand? Who is said to be speaking here in Zephaniah? Is it Zephaniah who's going to turn to the people? Or is it the God of Zephaniah, and God also, quote, unquote, you understand? Is it the God of Zephaniah, who, biblically speaking, is Jah, or is Yah, or is Yahweh, right? Is Yahweh, right, is speaking. But notice what they did in the Bible right here, Zephaniah 3 and 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. I'm going to deal with that pure language. People don't understand the language they speak, so they don't even understand what the word pure means. People think that the word pure means original. In other words, the first language. No, pure doesn't mean that. Think about pure in any other applicable way that pure is used, especially business. If you say um, somebody says this is um, pure gold, what is pure gold? How do we get pure gold? Do we find pure gold just when we're digging in the ground, we're walking someplace and our foot kicks on? Oh, there's pure gold coming out the ground. Does pure gold come out, or, or is the purity process a process of, it's a process, basically. It's a process of, of producing, you understand, burning away, you know, like purified in the furnace. That's why they put it in the furnace. Now we can go through about alchemy and, and chem, and chem is, is ancient Egypt, so forth and so on. I know there's a lot of Egyptophiles out there. You know, I, and I love Egypt, too. You understand? I mean, you know, the whole culture is very, it's very, it's extremely interesting. You understand? It's an extremely interesting culture, but most folks are approaching it in the black and white paradigm, you know, which is basically the Freemasonic paradigm. They're approaching it either, either um, um, white man, all bad, or white this, or black that. You know, it's kind of crazy like that because what they're not doing is they are not, um, they are not, um, like, chewing, you know, chewing their food well. You see, if the food is the knowledge, they're not chewing the food very well. And this is why we get this indigestion coming out of people. You understand? Their stomach, is, uh, it, it hurts them. And, and we can speak a little metaphysically about it because the stomach is, is the digestion. You know what I mean? As in Revelation says that a small book was given to John, and when he ate the book, it was sweet to his mouth, but it was bitter to his belly because some things are easy to say but hard to live. You see what I'm saying? They're hard to live or hard to assimilate you know what I'm saying, into your way of life. And so this is why we have folks forever learning, as the Bible says, but never able to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. The Bible likens these people to be silly women. But it's not just speaking about your sister and your wife, your daughter, whatever. It's speaking about you dudes, you, you men folk. You know what I'm saying? You men folk become like the silly woman that you deride because you're not digesting. You're not assimilating. In other words, if the knowledge does not, um, not, not motivate you, but if, if, if the knowledge is not applicable, it's vanity. It's useless. If there's no real application, we're not talking about every little piece of thing that you get to know, but we're talking about in, in, in this realm of so-called consciousness, what quote, end quote, is consciousness. So we'll deal with the pure language on a moment. But when we say that the met of of his imperial majesty, the book of the seven seals, when we say that that is, that that is the, 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 the pure language that is being spoken of, most folks ignorantly, most ignorant folks commonly just dismiss the point. They dismiss the point. They're like, oh, but that Bible, one, you say it's 1961 that His Majesty published it? It can't be the Book of the Seven. It can't be the pure language, because pure language, talking about the original language, it's not the original language, and it's not the pure language. And slow down. Slow down for a moment. What does original mean? Oh, we all know what original, no, 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 no. We all don't know what original means. Because we all, see, we have been born into a culture I don't want to sound like Morpheus for a moment, but it's like what Morpheus said to Neo. You see what I'm saying? You know, you know, we've been born into a world, you know what I'm saying, where the will has been pulled over your eyes. 
You see, and, and notice something, the wool being pulled over your eyes. Think about it for a moment. The wool comes from what kind of creature? Sheep. You understand? So you're pulling the sheep's hair over its eyes to prevent it from able to see. Think about what that most likely really means, you understand, and, and what it really reflects. That most folks looking at this, you know, understand, and seeing how the white man or the European has used or abused the Bible, you know, and the Bible is like a fire. A fire. Let me ask you a question. Is fire good or bad? Well, if you've been burnt by fire, you know, like a little child and somewhat immature or been traumatized by fire, yeah, you're probably going to say fire is bad. Fire bad. You understand? But is fire, in its essence, is fire good or bad? What's the, see, that, that's kind of, that kind of that's, that's like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in a sense. Because it's a little bit of a trick. You know, if somebody says it's good, right, you're going to say, but what about when they burned this person with fire? You're saying it's good, so you believe in that? You know, or if they say bad, you're going to say, what about when it warms up the house, so forth and so on, and cooks your food? It's bad then? Why you do it? See, it's a contextual matter. It goes beyond even the so-called good and bad, you, you know, the so-called black and white of the Masonic checkerboard, the Freemasonic, the Freemasonic um, checkerboard, right? So it says that they all may call, but beyond the point of pure language, could we use this quote elsewhere as well? Because the next verse connects it with Ethiopia, which is where we began this discussion to really point to that yes. The Bibles that we have, the King James Version, yes, it's Masonic. Yes, it has been translated and used as a justification for white supremacy. It's been used for a justification or a bulwark of the Gentile world dominion. Or you can say, um, now we got the new Bibles out here, right, the newer Bible versions. These are more correctly Freemasonic Bible, Freemasonic, and even on a certain level, some of them are Satanistic, but we, we, let's, let's not run ahead of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Are Freemasonic like the NIV, the NSV, and like the NKJV? Notice something about all this ending, this N, because it's, the N right here is for the NWO. The NWO, as it relates to white supremacy, Gentile world dominion. You see, because we're coming to the end of white supremacy. We're coming to the end of the Gentile world dominion. There's so many signs for it. Everybody's talking about a new dawn of consciousness. Maybe 2012, people will rise into con First of all, people have to rise into the consciousness of what's wrong with this world system, namely this world system. Then until they recognize, well, how did it begin? They can't really successfully end it. And the, the, the so-called rulers, they, they understand that very well. So they're actually behind all these NWO Bibles, you know. They call it the new this, the new this, the new this. Because not, why are they tweaking the Bible from the King James Version to these new sort of Bibles? Is because many of us out, out here you know what I'm saying, who are into the higher craft, we recognize what's going on. More, more folks recognize it. They recognize that actually some are going back to the actual 1611 Bible that had no J in it. You know what I'm saying? Because they're able to read that and understand and get a, it, it works better with their consciousness. They, they're able to see and, and to, and to um, grasp the truth from those particular versions. And why? Because those versions did not have as much tampering, intentional tampering with it to justify white supremacy. But make no mistake about it, the, the Torah, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the people of the Bible, the original, the real people of the Bible were not white folks. 
they were not like the pictures that you see, the, the Renaissance paintings, the Bible, you know, the Bible track, in, you know, the Bible school study, you know, the, the kind of stuff they put out with this counterfeit white supremacist Christianity. They wasn't like that. You understand? They wasn't like that. And here's the key right here. Here's the key right here. That they may call upon the name of, what does it say right there? Lord. Now, let's, let's analyze this word Lord. I want to give you a little bit of understanding here. This word Lord, notice something. This word Lord is the same, is the same <laughs> in all of the versions of the Bible with only one exception, right? And that's the Jehovah, you know, the Jehovah Witness Bibles. And instead of, instead of putting Lord, you understand? Know they put a bad and a poor mistranslation. They put a, a Germanic translation of Yahweh, which was turning the W into a V. And you get some people arguing that, that Yahweh is the proper way of pronouncing that. No, it's the Ashkenazi way of pronouncing that. You understand? But it's not the proper way. That's a W, not a V sound. But be that as it may, because they do the same thing with, with Abraham, they say Avraham. So they have tweaked it to their particular cultural role. They have actually reworked this for themselves and their people. Just like we are seeking to go to the root, our Ethiopian Hebrew root, so it can benefit us, you know what I'm saying, in this world and in the world to come. You over so now the key thing right here is this word Lord. Notice what it says right here, and I mean we could have gone from the beginning of uh, it's like with the word God. You understand? It's like the word God. Let's put God up here. Let's put God up here. G O D on and on the line G right there. G O D, right? Lord. Now notice this word Lord right here. Lord in sixteen eleven was a title, wasn't it? Is it a um, Hebrew title? No. Is it a Greek title? Like is it a Greek word or a title? No. Is it an Egyptian title? No, definitely not. Is it a Ethiopian? Basically, you get my point. It's a European title. So there are Men and people, what this book came from, King James of England, right? King Je Lords of London. Notice that the Lords of London made themselves into gods. Now, if you look at this scripture, and we just chose Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. We could have gone to another area because Lord is written throughout the King James version of the Bible. But we chose that for, to make the point that, it's saying, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they all may call upon the name of the Lord. Do, do, do you get the deception right here? Do you get the deception of white supremacy? Do you recognize, and not just white folks, because now more black people are uh, upholding white supremacy than a little bit. You understand? Because now white folks got it. Pay them off. You understand? Pay them off. Make them stars. You know what I mean? You know, make them idols for their own people. And, and you know, you're... You know how it goes, or you should know how it goes. But notice the deception about this verse. It says that they all may call upon the name of the Lord. That's not what the original prophet Zephaniah said. That's not what is written in the original and the pure language version of the Bible. So that basically, you know, you know it's interesting because they say, you know, they have people, Lord this, Lord that. Like, you know, Lord Mountbatten, Lord this. I don't want to talk about these people, but it, it is important for us to make this sort of connection. So which Lord is being talked about? Now, they will tell you that the, the Lord. Well, yeah, but which Lord are you talking about? Are you talking about the Lords from, from England? My Lord, my Lord. Yeah, which Lord are you speaking of? Are you talking about the Lords of London? Oh, aren't they the, like the, the bankers in the city of London, which control the world through the love of money? 
which is the root of all kinds of evil, and Satan transforms himself to be a minister of light, and Satan is the god of this world who has blinded the minds of the people. Now notice how they blind the minds. They blind the minds even with the Bible, but not because of the Bible, but what people don't perceive overtly. They receive covertly. Because if you read this verse, for example, it makes the idea that for then, they will t then, then I will turn to the people in pure language that they all may call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord. So now, how was this interpreted from white supremacy? Make the whole world English. See, if you make the whole world English, you don't really have to even say that the white man is God. You, you don't really even have to. They don't, they don't have to overtly say that. Of course, they have some extremist cuckoos. You know, they, some of the white supremacists and, and the rest of them. They'll, they'll, they'll make that point just in case you didn't, you didn't recognize it. They'll let you know. You understand that the white man is supreme, the pure white man and the white elders and all this kind of nonsense and everything like that. But how they use this word right here, notice the, 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 the key to the, the, the spell, right, or the, or the witchcraft, the key right here are these falsified names of the deity. And not that they're not the original name of the deity. Because even if you start saying, well, instead of Lord, you start saying Jah or Yahweh, you know, or Elohim instead of God, that's, that's a good step. And that's a starting step. But what you have to dismantle, you know what I'm saying, is the, is the covert, you understand, the, the COINTEL Pro that you don't see. And the COINTEL Pro that you don't see is the fact that even if you say Yahweh, you are still seeing in your heart and your mind, Lord. You, you still are picking up Lord. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you're like the Lord, the Yahweh. You, you know how the mind works. Unless it is consciously confronted, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's consciously taken on. So, yes, we agree, you know what I'm saying, that the Bible was rewritten. Not that it was written in that I mean, yeah, generally speaking, written, but if you want to really qualify, it was, re, it was, it was translated you know, or mistranslated and rewritten. The more accurate, it was mistranslated and rewritten. Although, generally speaking, when we look at the, the, the older and the pure language version, we can see how that statement right there is generally true. Not, not really accurately true. It, 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 from this verse right here, it's like, actually, it's 50% true. In other words, what we're reading here in the translation is 50% accurate, you know what I'm saying, with older and more original or pure language versions of the same text, not in English and not coming from the white supremacist root. It's actually probably 50%, 50, maybe the 50 to 75% correct. It's generally, structurally, structurally it's accurate. You know what I mean? Structurally, you'll, you know, I don't know if you understand linguistics, but you take a verse, you take the significant phrases, you take the subject, the object, the verb, you know, it, it's generally, but then the trick is something that we will have to explain like we're trying to do with this particular verse right here where it says, for then I will turn to the people a pure language that they that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Now people think this is talking about God out in the sky or, you know, really white supremacy don't care what you, what you really think God is. As long as you recognize their system and you submit to their system. I mean, it basically comes down to that. You know, if your religion, if your religion tells you to destroy Babylon, they're going to call you a terrorist. You know, if your religion tells you to fight against them, they're going to tell you, and they're going to find somebody else in your faith to say, that's not what we believe, we're peaceful people. You understand? But if your religion tells you, you understand, bow to the system and go along with, you know, go along with the Gentiles and so forth and so on, they're going to say, great, no, no real problem, no real problem about it. Um, Another point I want to make, but I think I'll hold that, but, but let me not, since I'm only saying what I'm saying and you will pick up on this, it's, have you noticed that um, the protocols of the learned elders of Zion, 
actually, this is going to shock some folks and everything, it's actually a good book. It's actually a good book, really. And, and, and we as Ethiopian Hebrews and as, as Beta Israel, you know, we shouldn't really balk at it so much so, really. You know, I mean, actually, this is why the white supremacists, you know what I'm saying, the white supremacists hate that book and try to demonize that book at the same time. Think about it if you, you know, think about it if you will. Well, of course, we know some folks are going to be like, I don't know what this brother just said just now. Well, what do you mean that the protocols of learned elders of Zion is? See, if we know ourselves, who are we? Well, well, those Jews don't care about you if you're black. They're going to do the same thing. Yeah, but you see, we're not trying to, the Jew is not our standard. You know, another man, man flesh and blood is not our standard. It's a true and living God. And once we touch, touch base, you know what I'm saying, with, with the root and the truth, you know, that, that, that point really doesn't matter. We are sovereign. But that word sovereign, before we go on, I want to touch on this word sovereign. Because in the new Bibles, you know what I'm saying, you know what they do? <laughs> this is so bug when you start to really research it and, and just open up your eyes. Don't go for preconceived notion. Because I read your, your, your response, uh, Bruce, you know, I was like, what? Slavery? Ah, oh, man, you know, that I, I first thought of pictures of, you know, the, these, you know, painting of different people in slave. But then I, I, I remember that slave is only in the Bible two times. Do you know that? The word slave only appears in the King James Version of the Bible two times. Two. I'm talking about the King James. Now, the new King James, uh, they might have, uh, you know, done some tricky stuff with that. But in the King James Version, which is the prevailing, still is the prevailing structural pervert. The structural Bible, structural perversion, no, structural prevailing Bible and everything like that, slave only appears two times. Guess how many times freedom appears in the Bible too? King James version of the Bible. Not new King James, but King James. Two, two, maybe three. I think about two times if, if I'm correct on that. But, but, but no more than, than two or three times in the Bible. Isn't this interesting? So, technically speaking, that is correct, you understand, concerning Egypt, ancient Egypt, and slavery as we know it. For, for, for example, well, stay tuned for the part we're going to deal with slavery, um, slavery in ancient Egypt. But first we wanted to touch on the Bible part, the Bible and, and um, white supremacy. So here's what they're doing in these new Bibles. I know it's, 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 it's a kind of a lot and everything like that, but... Um, um, Here's what they're doing in the new Bibles, right? Instead of just having Lord, whether capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, right? Here's what they do. They add in front of it, right? They add in front of it. You know what they add in front of it? What they add in front of it? They add in front of it sovereign. Sa -ver, um, sovereign, right? And then they put like a the. That, you know, and then they put the. And I, want, I underline the because I think it's a key word. Why is it a key word? Because the is derived from theo, right? Theo is derived from deo or deus, right? Deus, Zeus, Zeus is derived from the, the comet that fell that people worship. Some say it's similar to the Kaaba on a certain level. We've seen some research out there which is, kind of interesting on that point, but not to take on too much in this particular discussion right here, right now. Notice how in the new versions of the Bible, they add sovereign. Now, some of you will be like, well, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't really, um, that doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, so what? So why is that so important? You know why that's so important? Do you want to really know? what the matrix is. You know, do you really want to know what the matrix is? It's all around you. When you go pay your taxes, when you go to church, you know what I mean? Sovereign. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Where the white supremacy, the remnant of white supremacy, the rulers of the Gentile world system, they recognize, damn, we're, on a, we're in a time of changing shit. You know, things, things times are a-changing. 
people are becoming more conscious. So, you know what we have to do? We have to get out ahead of the story. This is what they do. We have to get out ahead of the story and, 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 and try to create a new world order that can keep us, the old world rulers, as the rulers of the new world order and put out all this false propaganda. A lot of the videos and a lot of the, the different videos about the new world order and everything, a lot of that stuff is basically to keep you in a frozen psychological state. Most of that information doesn't tell you there's anything really that you can really do about it. They, they tell you that it's, it's, it's done. It, it's, a, it's a fiat accompli. You understand? It's a fate accompli. It's accomplished fact. It's accomplished matter. It's done. They get everything sealed up, son. Nothing can do about it. You're going to be a slave. A what? A slave or a servant, if you want to put a nicer word. You understand? Use a nicer reference. You're going to be a servant in the new world order. But now the new Bible is put in sovereign. So in a new Bible, instead of saying Lord God, you know what they say? Instead of saying Lord God, they say the sovereign Lord. Right? Notice what they have not translated. Notice the key. What's the whole point of the Bible? I mean, what is the so-called um, the, the point that they put out is the point of the Bible? Because if I say the point of the Bible, people can go from their own different understandings, and some of that is correct. But what's the point? The point is about God, right? It's about the Lord. God the Lord. Notice we keep using we keep using these words, God the Lord. But these are names of blasphemy, basically. They're names of blasphemy. This is why we're so thankful to the grace of our our black Lord. This is why we say black Lord. We know it offends them. Because they say there's no black Lord. The Lord ain't black. What are they really saying? They're saying that the black man has no sovereignty. The black man has no divine dominion. That is basically what they're saying. So it doesn't really matter on a certain level. You understand? Yeah, you might be able to understand this verse a little bit better, so forth and so on, and, and, you, and you feel good about yourself. You understand? Because you understand the verse. But you have not broken the Achilles heel. You have not crushed the head. This is the head of the serpent. Believe it or not. You understand? Like it or not. This is the head of the serpent right here. You understand? The names, the false names for God that they use over and over. You see, if you were to say, say, yeah. See, even the Rastafari movement was right and exact when they found in, 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 in Psalm 68, verse 4, said by his name, Jah. You understand? Because Jah at least was a positive step in the right direction. You understand? So we refer, instead of saying Lord and God, we said Ja, because it's a positive and a very powerful mental ascent. You see what I'm saying? Even though we understood that when we read the King James Bible, we'll come all across L-O-R-D, you understand? But instead we would say, we would say Ja. And of course we've struggled, the movement has struggled, you understand, to, to, um, to progress. Why well, say struggled because of the lack of the Amharic language, because of the lack of our getting back to this verse, Zephaniah. You know what Zephon means? Zephon? At the first basic level, Zephon means the secret or mystery of God. Zephaniah. Ayah. You see, Ayah? If you look in the old 1611 King James Bible, instead of Jah, you know what you'll find, right? Instead of the J, you will find Aya. You understand? And Aya or Yah is still there even in the name Zephaniah. Go look at Zephaniah and you see two parts, Zephan, Aya. You understand? Uh, you, you know, you'll find this in other names of other, other Yahweh's prophets. You'll find the Aya there. You understand? They even have hallelujah with the J. You understand? But they say it hallelujah. 